What if I told you that computers never actually subtract numbers? In this video, I'll show you a clever trick that they use instead. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series we are building a Logisim simulation of an 8-bit CPU with the following design goals in mind. First, the CPU should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. Second, the CPU should be capable of complex operations. And third, the CPU should be easy to program. In the last video we learned about binary numbers and designed an adder circuit that adds two binary numbers together. In this video, we will learn how to represent negative numbers in binary. Then we will add some logic to our adder to make it be able to also do subtraction. Since we are designing an 8-bit CPU, we'll use 8-bit numbers in all of the examples. There are a couple different ways we could represent negative numbers in binary. The simplest way to do this would be to treat the highest bit not as part of the number per se, but as a sign bit. For example, 00100100 would be 68, while 10100100 would be negative 68. There are a couple of problems with this approach, though. First, we have two ways to represent 0. This also breaks arithmetic, since adding 68 to negative 68 does not result in 0. Fortunately, there's a clever way to get around both of these problems without having to add a bunch of complicated logic to our CPU. We just need to find a number that, when added to 68, gives a result of 0. We'll start by flipping all of the bits of 68. Notice that if we now add this number to 68, we get a result containing all 1s. Simply adding 1 to this result makes it wrap back around to 0 since we only have 8 bits to work with. So if we take 68, flip all of the bits, then add 1, we can use that number to represent negative 68. This method of flipping all of the bits and adding 1 to make a negative number is called 2's complement notation, and is the most common way computers use to represent negative numbers. This notation has some very useful properties. First, we can still tell if a number is positive or negative by looking at the highest bit. And second, arithmetic works naturally without having to change anything about our addition logic. Remember how we said that computers don't really do subtraction? Subtraction is just adding a negative number, so the only thing we really have to do to subtract two numbers is add some logic to turn one of the numbers we want to add into a negative number, turning a subtraction problem into an addition problem. This is fairly straightforward, and is much simpler to implement than building a whole new set of circuitry just to handle subtraction by itself. If we look at the truth table for an XOR gate, we can see that if one of the inputs is 0, the output is just the same as the other input, and if one of the inputs is 1, then the output is just the opposite of the other input. So if we add an XOR gate before all of the B inputs to our adder, then wire one of the inputs of each of those XOR gates to a subtract input, we can selectively flip all of the B bits when we want to do subtraction. Then, to complete the 2's complement conversion, we can add 1 by also connecting the subtract signal to our adder's carry in input. Now, whenever we make our subtract input 1, our adder will perform the operation A minus B instead of A plus B. Here's a 4 bit version of that circuit on a breadboard using NMOS logic gates built with transistors. This is simply the same breadboard circuit from the last video, but with some additional XOR gates added to take care of the subtraction logic. Here we can see this circuit performing the operation 4 plus 3 equals 7. If I then change the subtract input to 1, we can see that it instead performs the operation 4 minus 3 equals 1. Now that we can build circuits that do both addition and subtraction, we are one step closer to building our CPU. In the next video, we will talk about carry look-ahead logic, which is an optimization that makes adders and subtractors much faster. 
This will complicate our logic a bit, but it will make our CPU much faster when we build it with transistors later. Until then, feel free to play around in Logism, or maybe grab some transistors and see what you can create. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.